Hello viewers, I'm SB and welcome back to Disco Elysium. Some stuff has occurred. <laughs> some, some things. Some things have gone down. Uh, I gotta say, I said a couple of times last episode that, that this doesn't feel like anything else that I've played. And I wanna, uh, I wanna elucidate a little bit there. Like, mechanically speaking, it's not really that different from other CRPGs, right? And I saw some people... Ben on the Giant Bombcast talked about the game a little bit, and he described it as a CRPG, which it is. Uh, and I saw some people responding to that, being like, oh, come on, it's basically just a point-and-click adventure game. And I think, based on the conversation, what they meant was, there's no combat. Which is absurd. I'm getting distracted. Okay. <clears throat> when I say that this game does not make... This game feels like it feels unlike all the other things I've ever played. I'm talking a lot more about the the narrative, the style of the delivery of the narrative, but also the narrative itself uh, than I am about the mechanics. This game is noir -y detective fiction in a way that video games generally don't get to be. Um, this game is about a man who has failed and who is failing and who continues, if you play it the way I did, uh, the way I've been playing it, continues to fail. Uh, in a fascinating way. And it, it's a person who doesn't know who he is, not just in the video game character ridiculous amnesia sense, which is maybe the most common character trope, most common protagonist trope in CRPGs. Um, but, like, also in the way that a lot of people walk around in their lives not knowing who they are and, the, you know, that thing that you have to struggle with all the time and trying on like the the moving things around in your thought catalog and the placing skill points reactively it feels so much like what you do as a person trying on different bits of personality and going does this does this feel like me is that me is that who i am like even aspirationally is that who i could be it's like i don't know it's fascinating i think that this game is an incredible thing. What an what an absurd embarrassment of riches this year has been in video games. Just like maybe the best year, maybe the best year. I was going to put more words there, but maybe the best year, period. I mean, I know 1995, but like maybe the best year. Anyway, uh, what are we doing? We're going to the island, but first we're going to go out on the roof because I'm kind of curious uh, whether or not we can attempt to do whatever it was that I was going to be able to do in that shivers check. Because that, that shivers check that we had with Klausia was just to look up at the sky. And I'm wondering if uh, if we can still stand on the roof and look up at the sky and have whatever feeling it was. The thread is tied to the antenna. Yes, that's literally true. Uh, no. Answer is no. No, we cannot. Okay, well, I guess let's go back downstairs and see what things look like. I see Kuno is still just hanging out in the backyard. I wonder if Kuno has any respect for the fact that I got myself shot, like a bunch, and I'm still walking around. Now I'm the badass. Also, I know I should have, I, I shouldn't be running. <laughs> my, my whole lower half probably wants me not to be running. Um, I assume you can get your gun back, and I assume that if you do get your gun back, you can you know, actually use it in that encounter, and I would have been real good at using it in that encounter, particularly given the Fa Fairweather T500 skill and everything. Uh, that reminds me, we gotta look at our clothing. Um, but it feels right to me that I wasn't able to... I wasn't able to find it, I wasn't able to figure it out, I wasn't able to put forth any offensive effort there, and all I could do was use myself to try to shield others. Like, there's something about that and and not just doing that but failing at it in the way and to the degree that we did fail at that just feels i mean i'm gonna try to stop saying it but one more time it just doesn't feel like anything i've ever seen in a game before all right hey gart let's have a talk with probably everybody right we probably need to like catch up a little bit it is day six now uh, according to our logbook it is saturday so we only, we only did, what, half a day on Thursday, and then we've been unconscious for, like, almost 48 hours. So stuff has probably evolved. <laughs> Some things uh, may have changed. You're up. It's good to see you back on your feet. Did you like your room? 
I cleaned it for you. Yeah, I did. Thank you. It's a big improvement over what I, what I had done to it. You're welcome. I thought it would be nice for you to wake up in a clean place after you, let's be fair, defended this establishment and its clientele from gunfire. Well, tried, anyway. Uh, defended, maybe putting a, a bit generously, though. I had a great view of you doing nothing to stop those psychopaths. Then I crawled inside. Bullets started flying. Anyway. Hey, okay, I didn't do nothing. I probably, the dialogue checks I passed had some effect, maybe? I'm hoping. One thing I'm actually really curious about, and I'm gonna probably rush to the end of the game, not in the sense that I'm gonna start playing faster, but like I'm gonna try to get ahead on episodes, uh, because I really, really want to go online and read what other outcomes that can have. Like, can Kim actually die there? Can you save everybody? Can you shoot everybody? Like, I'm, I'm fascinated to know what all of the little through lines must be for that. I wish you a quick recovery. Also, he raises his finger, you and your partner are staying here free now. This establishment supports cops. The stay is free. The drinks are not, he adds. Just felt I needed to specify that. So where did everybody go? Oh, you know. He looks around at the empty place. People don't tend to stick around after shootouts. Turns out they're not good for business. What happened to the man with the sunglasses? This is the thing I really want to know about. He shakes his head. I don't remember everyone who comes here, and many people wear sunglasses inside lately. Must be a fad. Or, the world is rapidly increasing in brightness. Um... You know, I have to mention it. When, when it happened, you were right out there, on the balcony. Yeah, I was, yeah. He nods, trying to remain aloof. That's because I'm a badass. If you say it as two different words like that, you sound like there's something's wrong with your ass, man. No, no, just nod stoically. He's he's going for a thing. I'm gonna I'm gonna play into his thing. I'm dramatic, but I also want to support other people in their attempts to be dramatic. He nods back at you even more stoically. If it gets any more stoic, there's not gonna be any nodding happening at all. Make that three. The lieutenant is nodding too. Hands crossed. <laughs> what a good scene. <laughs> all right, thank you. Uh, I'm not going to tell him about the karaoke. I'm still going to do that, though. Hey, speaking of things I'm still going to do, hold on a second. We got skill points. We have three skill points, and we're very close to a fourth. We have some skill checks that I think we ought to open up. Number one thing. I think this is the moment to convince Kim that there's something going on here. Something wild is happening. Some kind of sexy mystery is occurring. So that's an Inland Empire check. We're going to go for this. I think we can do this. Is there anything else I really want to unlock? A bunch of these aren't even available anymore, right? That cargo container door thing opened up again. We could go try that. I'm going to hit Inland Empire, though. I'm gonna, let's let's put a skill point into Inland Empire. Wait, wait, wait. Let's talk to Kim first. See if the check yeah. is just unlocked. Okay. We are not, in fact, going to talk about the boots I'm wearing. This is never happening. All right, let's throw a point in here. And then let's... Change my clothes to all of my plus Inland Empire stuff. Uh, am I wearing... I'm not wearing my appropriate tie. I know... I know my horrific necktie. It's kind of beautiful, though. You gotta give it that. Uh, and then... Okay. Sunglasses inside. Maybe they're all just trying to, you know, get more in touch with the man within. And then... I don't know if we have other stuff. I knew we had that stuff. But I definitely don't want to walk around in this armor all the time. This has got to be... Got to be the end of that. Uh, well... Empathy... Okay, Inland Empire. You know what? This is just better. This is just better than the other tie. I do love a point of volition. We could also uh, unlock that volition check at the doorbell. That may well be worth doing. Okay, that's all we can get. So, Inland Empire plus two... We don't really have a very high base Inland Empire skill, and I intended to improve it, but then I got kind of, like, distracted. So we should probably also, while we're doing this, uh, maybe change out the shirt. This is giving me minus one empathy. I don't think I want minus one empathy right now. You know, what we need is more points of shivers, obviously. Uh, which, which gloves do I want to put on? Actually, honestly, the Fairweather T500 gauntlets might be okay to just leave on. 
And then the boots. Uh, let's let's go for let's go for empathy shoes. Trying to uh, trying to reduce the damage that my armor is doing to my psyche here. Not a very high chance. We could take a swing, and then if it fails, just unlock it again. I might. Let's try it at least. Oof, three. Only banal things strike you. At the core, you're a very banal person with a very small soul. That's ridiculous. Ow, man. That hurt. Let's do one more. Let's do one more. I'm not going to spend our last skill point this way. But I do want to push our Inland Empire up higher anyway. Yes. Yeah, I think that's a skill we ought to have. Okay, we get there. Wait, what if you did it? Did, did what? The Hanged Man? Yeah, you killed him. And then, as part of the plan, you drowned out the memory. Yo, I feel like we went over this already. Forgetting was merely a matter of convenience. Very clever. Maybe this is why your chest feels so hollow. You did an awful thing, and you can't even bring yourself to acknowledge it. Are you sure you would have had the strength to take down a hardened mercenary? You're not in the best shape. Um... Well, you know, I did suggest that I had done it in the th in the, the fracas, and that was the first Kim had heard of me saying that idea. He doesn't know, necessarily, that I didn't mean it as a real theory. Let's probe it. Why not? Let's have a look. Uh, Kim, I think I may be the murderer. I killed the man and then tricked myself into forgetting about it. The lieutenant appears unfazed. And what has led you to this conclusion? Uh, well, I'm... I believe I could have done anything. My chest feels hollow, like I did something terrible, or actually a string of terrible things to almost everyone we've met. That is a common side effect of overindulgence. It'll pass. So, you're saying I didn't kill him, but Kim, it turned out that I was the one racing around town in my motor carriage. He purses his lips. The victim wasn't run over by a drunk driver, so while I can't condone your driving habits... The cases remain unrelated. Look, it's not unusual for detectives to feel complicit in the crime until the perpetrator is identified and apprehended, especially when the investigation is dragging. So let's get back to it, shall we? Yeah, all right. All right, fine. I don't feel like we got anything out of that, but like I said, I think it makes sense for my Inland Empire skill to be higher anyway. Let's, um, yeah, let's have a chat with Who's left here? I wonder what they'll have to say. Seeing you approach, the bruised man clenches his fists. Well, that's a bad sign. Oh, it's you. Didn't think we'd see you walking anytime soon. Elaine, look, it's the cowardly cop. Huh? What? He looks up, his eyes full of confusion, as if he'd just woken from a deep sleep. Yo, I took multiple bullets for you people. I didn't take all the bullets. There were a lot of bullets, but I took several of them. There would be, there would definitely be more dead if I had not gotten shot on purpose. For your lefty. He says with a little nod, but the remaining Hardy Boys don't seem to register his words. So, what's going to happen to the Hardy Boys now that Titus is dead? No, we should be. The nice thing to do would be to ask after people first. Is he okay? Does he look like he's okay? He does not. His unshaven face is almost gray, and he reeks of piss, sweat, and booze. Well, how badly was he hurt? He wasn't, that's the thing. He sighs heavily. Titus, Theo, Dennis, Angie, they're all gone, but he got away without a scratch. I, I just... He seems barely able to keep his head up. There's nothing left. Nothing! This is a broken man, he whispers to you. He probably feels that he should have been able to protect the others somehow, and now he feels guilty for not dying with them, or or instead of them. What are you suggesting, Kim? I'm not suggesting much. All I'm saying is he lost everything. Uh, well, I mean, a little bit of tough love can sometimes be effective. It's not as effective as people would like to believe. Mostly, it's being an asshole. Um, but you'll get over it. You'll get over it is definitely worse. And this thing is like, hey, maybe you should kill yourself. So I guess I'm going to say the top one. I don't like any of these, to be perfectly honest with you. Listen, our character, he was not a people person prior to the 
thing prior to the event, right? And we've made a lot of strides in that. Conscious strides. Conscious reshaping of who we are. But sometimes you still whiff, you know? I fail a check. Let's pretend I failed a check. Shit is tough, but you need to get off your ass and finish this. The dull, looking, uh, the dull eyes looking back to you from the narrow face momentarily light up, and he mumbles, What? Yeah, we gotta push him. Let's push him. Uh, Krennel, Wild Pines, all the people responsible for the deaths of your friends, you're just gonna leave it like that? Sons of bitches. He mumbles something in Mesca. When he sinks down on the table again, a malevolent smile spreads across his face. Was this really the best idea? The lieutenant pauses to think for a moment. I guess you may have prolonged his existence a bit, if he can still remember this when he sobers up. And if you think this will keep him from offing himself, I'll make sure to remind him. So far, I've just been pouring whiskey in him to keep him sedated. So what's going to happen to the Hardy Boys now that Titus is dead? Also, that's a terrible strategy. T t t t the spit flying out of his mouth is accompanied by a painful grimace. T Titus is fucking dead. But what's gonna happen to the Hardy Boys? Look around you, man. This shit is done. There are no more Hardy Boys. Oh, well, what? You two are just gonna go back to hauling containers in the harbor? No, man. I, I don't know. I guess the Union will still be policing the neighborhood, but... He looks at his dazed companion. Who's gonna do it now? I mean, I am is tough. I have a precinct. I'm going to have to go home eventually. Maybe I say you, Eugene. Maybe we try to keep the union in one piece. I mean, like, it's not a bad idea for there to be a dock workers union. It's just that the dock workers union as it existed may have gotten up to some things it shouldn't have ought to have gotten up to. Uh, or I could try to, I could try to, me and Eugene together, push Elaine into a leadership position and hope that the pressure of that is enough to keep him compressed into one solid piece. The thing is, based on based on the interactions we had with these guys, I think Eugene was the smartest of them. If you don't count the lawyer. Yeah, you, Eugene. Me? No, man, I'm not a leader. He smiles suddenly. And you know Titus only recruited me because I play the guitar? Said the team could use the morale boost. Hey, you can do it. You genie boys has quit the ring, doesn't it? What? Fuck no. If I stay, we'd keep the name to honor Titus. Well, that's a noble thought. You're going to do all right. Listen, no one's born to lead. Titus was. His eyes meet yours. But thanks for the vote of confidence. If I don't stick around, it's all over. So I guess I sort of have to now. Yeah, man, you know, he slaps his hand on the table in a sudden burst of drunk enthusiasm. You know, you've got this, you got this. He looks off to the side, eyes filled with worry. I haven't got shit, Al. This is not completely ludicrous. Him and Titus were the only detectives of the bunch. Titus more, but Eugene at least knew how to think along. So, do you guys have any idea what happened to Clausia? Damn songbird of misery, that one. The man shakes his head. And do you have any information on this songbird of misery? Nah, Gart said she took off some time before the firefight, that's all. I'm trying to remember if there was anything... Oh, yeah, he said she seemed to be in a real hurry. She's gone, yeah. Again, I'm not 100% sure that having Kim... Like, arresting her and having Kim try to drive her back to the station... I'm not 100% sure that that doesn't end with her manipulating Kim into letting her go because arresting her is killing her. And to be perfectly honest with you, I would totally have understood if he did that. But I just don't, I don't know that that would actually have helped. The game is like, taking pains to really pound me on the head with, hey, you fucked this up. And that's so much in the tone and spirit of the game that I can totally see it doing that even if it's not mechanically true. Take care, guys. Yeah, you too. It's a rough world out there, he shakes his head. It's not easy being a cop. We worked too hard on you. Both of you, he turns to Kim. We shouldn't have fucked with you like we did. You got between us and a lot of bullets in that fight. Martinez owes you one. That's kind of you to say. The lieutenant closes his notes. Take care of your friend, okay? 
I will, and you take care of yours. A sharp pain shoots up your side and into your stomach. You must not look too good. Luckily, it passes. Yeah, our pain threshold is not <laughs> is not high enough. Uh, should we have a chat with our friend here? I mean, I'm curious what his take on the whole situation was. Never mind, we don't have anything with him. We could unlock that composure check, but I really, I really want to go for the volition thing at the uh, the door buzzer. Provided that that's even still available to us, who knows? There's another situation where we're going to want to change our clothes, though, because uh, we got to put. I think we got to put the armor back on. the The chest piece has volition on it. I think it's our only chest piece that does. Oh, hey now. Uh, un jour je serai de retour. Boy. Uh, jour is day? I think? Hold on. Maybe, maybe we can just read French. One day I will return to your side. The graffito has been painted over the traces of the fight that took place here. It smells of blood and heavy fuel oil. This was Cindy the Skull. Well, looks like Cindy the Skull finally found the words for her masterpiece. The lieutenant crouches, touching the fuel oil with his finger. Looks like it, yes. This is still fresh. It wasn't here yesterday. Uh, I smell heavy fuel oil. And blood. Some of it even yours. Heavy fuel oil, isn't that flammable? I don't want to set this on fire. I mean, it would look totally wicked for a little while. I guess, I don't actually know what the end result of that would be. If me setting this on fire would in some way burn it more permanently into the pavement, that's cool, and I would like to do that. If it will just burn off the paint and make it less visible, I don't want to do that. So for right now, I'm not going to do anything. Alright, let's, uh, let's go over here and play with this again. Oh, actually, we should go down to the basement. Let's do this first, but we should go down to the basement and check that freezer. Okay, volition check. We can make a volition check happen. I'm going to take a point of volition. I feel like I've really committed to the case at this point. Nothing's going to shake me now. And then also... I don't remember all of the gear that we had that has volition on it, but I do remember that this does. And sadly, then we once again do the quick scan. ASB, you just looked at literally all of these. Why don't you remember what you saw then? Hey, listen, do I come to where you work and knock the important things that you're good at out of your hand? I don't. But after you ask me a question like that, I would if I could. So you just, you know, you keep that in mind. I think we might only have this one piece of volition gear. Okay. Well, that's as good as it's getting, then. How good is it? Actually pretty damn good. Whatever she says, it can't hurt you. You're a different person now. Stronger, healthier, and... Well, okay, maybe not healthier, but it's a bonus that you've drank so hard you can't remember any of your past relationships. Oblivion's the ace in your corner. There's a light buzz as you press the doorbell. That's a light buzz that you're hearing right now. Uh, waiting for her to answer answer the call. It's cold outside, and you can hear the wind blowing into the speaker. Ooh. That's something. Okay, that could stop. That could stop happening. There's the static again, whispering like a seashell pressed against the ear. Yes, hello, this is Tricentennial Electrics. It's the same voice you heard before. Have you come to place an order? Uh... Last time we talked, there was some confusion. You got me mixed up with someone else. My god. Here come the bad vibes again. Relax. Distance yourself from it. Uh, boy, what do I say? Here's the thing. If I'm trying to, like, ride the lie of you got me mixed up with someone else and it was totally an innocent mistake, then I want to say what? I'm going to I'm going to say the bottom thing. I kind of want to uh, I, I kind of want to apologize. I feel like I was manipulative. I may have done some real emotional damage here and uh I, yeah, please don't please don't hang up. I just want to explain myself. Before you can finish your sentence, the voice continues speaking. It's you. 
My god, I didn't think I would hear your voice again. Wait, she... It's a recording. Hey, didn't you already say that the last time we talked? Michelle, just please. Even her breathing, the way her voice drops when she finishes the sentence, sounds exactly the same. This is rigged up to a recording somewhere in the building. Why did you even call? I don't understand. You've been gone for months, she continues. I thought you didn't care. Is this some kind of joke? It doesn't matter what I say, you're just gonna continue, right? The voice from the intercom doesn't answer, but you can hear her breathing. Wind blows into your microphone again, crackling and echoing in the box. Is it over? Can we talk now? Ever since I came to work here, it's been different. As if my mind's wiped clean, been wiped clean. It's so nice. It's so nice to be able to finally forget about you. And then it hits you. You're a recording. She tries again not to cry, and still doesn't succeed completely. Her quiet sobs sound old and distant, as if her voice is being played off a wax cylinder. Real or not, your mirror neurons react. It feels painful to be listening to this. Why does it still feel like it's my fault? Her sound melts into the static from a long-distance phone call. From time to time you can hear people calling in, or talking in the distance, but can't make out any words. This is where you hung up the call the last time, but the recording is still going. Well, then I'm going to keep listening. It's kind of funny. Like, the, the idea of the detective getting tricked by this wax cylinder into feeling something, which is being presented as a little bit ridiculous, is the same trick the video game has to pull on us all the time, right? For me to feel something when I think Kim is in danger, or for me to feel bad about Lizzie getting shot, it's like exactly the same thing. All of that was pre-recorded, and that's kind of an interesting, uh, an interesting thing here. Let's keep listening. A phone rings in the office with an old-fashioned chime, and someone walks by in a pair of heels. The static is like a warm blanket wrapped around the sounds. Well, I'm going to say is anyone there, but we know that no one is there. No one replies, but the static grows stronger like rainfall. Then a female voice speaks out, completely different from the one before. Glorious and total, somehow. Crawling inside your head. For three hundred years I have been here. Volatile and luminous. Made of sodium and rain. That's a bad combination. If you want me, you can find me on the beach. Don Le... Uh, Don Le Dernier Ball? Maybe? Ball? Uh, Don is on? Maybe? So, the strange alien thought pattern ends. The lieutenant cuts in, inspecting the intercom. It was a recording trapped in the circuitry from some ancient tenant. This sometimes happens. Shall we conclude here? We have other mysteries to solve. Wait, something weird just happened to me. Don't take this the wrong way, but... During our short stint working together, something weird is almost always happening to you. God, I hope that that line is not just a thing that's always said. I hope that we really earned that through our gameplay decisions. That is true. Okay, on the beach, something, something. I might have to... I'm gonna... You know what? I'm gonna Google Translate this right now. Our character can speak French, can read French, I think. I'm pretty sure. We could read the graffiti. So, this is not cheating. This is a thing that I should I, I should actually already know. Uh, ball. Translate from French to English. Go. In, in the last ball is what it means. In the last ball. You can find me on the beach in the last ball. Okay. All right. Listen, the developers knew you were going to do that. It's the, it's the internet age. You have access to Google Translate. You probably have a second monitor. You just flip right over there and... Or your phone. Most people's second monitor is their phone. Nowadays, I guess. Uh, let us check the freezer. Can I open this thing yet? I still have my pry bar in hand. Machine unplugged. I mean, it has not gotten any better. Pry bar still not strong enough. Still need a better pry bar. I don't want to turn the ice cream crank. I'm afraid that if there's something of value in here, turning the machinery is going to break it. 
One other thing I do want to do while we're here really quickly is just take a look in here. I'm curious if um, if this stuff got interfered with. Okay, these are, these are not new options, I don't think. It's weird that they're not grayed out, though. Hey, where are we? Seems like an old bunker from the Revolutionary Period. Look at all those rifles. Oh, right. I hadn't said these before because Kim wasn't with us when we uh, when we went down here. So what does this mean, a rifle here? It means there are firearms, breech loaders, still lying around in Martinez. So it would have been good in our case against Ruby for Titus. Too late for that now, but still. Might be useful down the road. He likes this find. He likes what an extremely good detective I am. And let's be honest, I am an extremely good detective. I might be the greatest detective currently in this basement. I'd say there's about a 50-50 shot. Alright, so uh, the next thing to do is, I guess, just to go down to the fishing village. I mean, we should look on the beach for balls? I don't really know. You know what? Let's go talk to Cindy. We have a red check with Cindy that I did not pass and did not even attempt, because that's how red checks work. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and run. Listen, you all know. Imagine that I'm I'm limping along, being supported by Kim, but like we got stuff to do. In the real world, we got actual human things to do. I'm gonna go talk to Cindy about her her beautiful new piece of graffiti and also about maybe giving me some spare paint. Seems like she has a lot of paint. She's gone. She might be inside her little um her little shack. Joyce is gone. I wonder what we actually could have gotten out of Joyce. To a certain extent, I wonder how much the game is employing the old trick of pretending that things are actual options when they are not to create a, f a an illusion of greater freedom and reactivity. It's like some classic CRPG stuff. Characters in the world berating you for a thing that literally couldn't have happened because you didn't try to do it. Still having that camera issue. Uh, a friend of mine said that his camera, first of all, he can't move it at all with the with the arrow keys, that it's totally automatic, and secondly, that it never does that thing. So after he told me that, I tried validating my files and reinstalling the game, and I don't know, it's still like this. I wonder if I broke it somehow. Whatever, it's fine. It's uh, It gives us a moment to collect ourselves at the beginning of each new thing. Well, we have no interactables here. Maybe Cindy, uh, maybe Cindy bailed after completing her masterpiece, which means I'll never get to complete my masterpiece. Except for this, except for, of course, the investigation, which is a different kind of masterpiece. We do have some, uh, some stuff to sell it for it. I suppose we could do that. I don't know. I don't think it's a particularly, uh, particularly high priority. We have lots of money. We're fine. Let's go ahead and uh, and head over to the docks, I suppose. Sorry, not the docks. The fishing village is what I meant. I assume that we can't get into the dock area at all. Like, we probably can't even get to that shipping container to try to talk it into opening. Probably, for the sake of thoroughness, we should check that. Also, I kind of... I. And believe me, I know how this sounds, even before I say it. But still, the words are uh, the words are going to come. Kind of want to talk to Kuno. It's like curious what he thinks about what happened, and about the fact that I got very shot. People seem to have uh, mostly mixed reactions to my desperate attempt to defend others. Probably their reactions would be less mixed if I had succeeded. I can't believe I'm doing this on purpose when I don't even have to. Everyone what a world! Everyone says you started crying in the middle of a firefight and then bled like a pig. I guess that was cool. Wait, who's saying that? People, they say you kind of died for a moment, that you let your shit out already, but then came back. So I guess that's what's cool now. That's like grudging respect. Just don't think. Just don't think because you got half your dick shot off and you're an invalid now, Kuno's going to treat you different. Kuno doesn't reward weakness, he says, looking at your pathetic limp. It's business as usual with Kuno. Kuno's cold like that. 
feels good for some reason. Okay, well, I'm off. Watch out, pig. It's a dangerous world out there. But Kuno's got his eyes on you. What is that supposed to mean? Kuno starts doing the I got my eye on you gesture repeatedly. Who knows? Okay, so he doesn't even have any idea what he's talking about. I feel like that's true a lot. Uh, let's see if I'm allowed to... Ooh, there's a... There is an orb over there. We should go touch that orb. I could use one XP. I'm assuming that Gary the Crypto Fascist has, uh, has bugged out. I think it would be a good idea for him to leave in a real hurry. Partially because Everett might do something to him and partially because I might do something to him. If we can get to that shipping container, I really do want to try the check again. But I'm, uh, I'm thinking we might be out of luck on that one. Oh, wait, what am I doing? This is not... Hold on, is that... Okay, no, it does not have a yellow outline. This is not the way to do this. I have a card. I can just walk in. I spaced a little bit there. It's been, it's been a long time since we tried to go up there. So... As far as collecting the rest of the armor goes, I know we, we may well be past the point where we need it. Um, but as far as collecting the rest of the armor goes, we still don't actually know where the helmet is. We know kind of what happened to it, but it could be anywhere. Kuno kicked it into the sea, right? And then also, there's probably pants. I think there were pants. I certainly could use some pants. I could have used some pants before the, uh, before the conflict broke out. I wonder if you get all of the armor pieces. I wonder if you can uh, if you can just tank as many shots as you want without uh, going down. We're just gonna wrap around here real quick and grab that uh, grab that one green orb, cause you know how I feel about orbs. I just do so love to have a thought. You hear the sound of running water. Someone's washing dishes. I don't think we actually need to go talk to him. I just wanted to touch that. So we're actually like really close to the next level, right? Yeah, 97. If we make it over to the island, um, I'm sure we'll level up real fast off of just touching orbs. I really like the the orb, the orb XP thought with all the bonus perception and stuff. I think that's a... High perception is a useful thing. High encyclopedia, also a useful thing. Uh, but we managed to... Wait a minute, who is that? Is that a person we know? Wait, 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 I'm having a thought. Maybe a sea monster did this to the plaza. That seems unlikely. Officer, care to play a game with a lonely old man? Oh, uh, this is bad. Actually, never mind. It wouldn't be the same. Uh, where's Rene? The prick is gone, he replies, trying to smile. I, I can barely believe it, but he's really gone. He's trying to retain his jolly facade, but the underlying sadness casts a deep shadow over his wrinkled face. Gone? Gone where? Gaston sighs and, and mumbles more to himself than you. Hell, most likely. He was an absolute cunt. What? Was he killed during the mercenary tribunal? Oh, he would have liked that. The old man slowly shakes his head. Violent lives ending violently. That's how he wanted to go. Sadly, it was not the case. Well, how did he die? His angry little heart finally gave out. He sighs. The dock workers found him in the guard booth this morning. Wasn't even supposed to be working for another week, but he just had to prove how tough, I assume, he is. Guess he was about to head home, because when the dock workers found him, he was wearing civilian clothes and not the cockatoo uniform I saw him in all the time. Sometimes I thought he was wearing it just to piss me off. I bet that's true, actually. Gaston smiles a sad smile. Now the joke's on him, because he's going to be buried without it. Uh, was he really that bad? I repeat, an absolute cunt. He turns to look at the crater. Even his old army buddies didn't want him around. It was like an old viper. The only people who could stand to be around him were Jeannie and me. He pauses. She saw something in him when we were just kids, and... His voice trembles. 
and, and she never lost sight of it. And I thought if the most beautiful being in the world can love him, then there must be something worth holding on to. So, did you love him? Oh, we've hated each other our entire lives. So much, in fact, that he falls silent and looks at you, eyes filling up with tears. Yes, I, I loved that angry prick. He didn't deserve it, but I did. He wipes his eyes with a sleeve. You know what his last words to me were? Uh, tell me. In Guillaume's time, you'd have been shot without a trial. That's what he said to me. The old man gathers himself and wipes his eyes again. He lived a cunt and he died a cunt. Let's leave it at that. Uh, hey, I found this. Here, something to remember your friend by. Let me see. Gaston takes the photo, hands trembling. This was 60 years ago. We all went to that parade. Young Rene looks so happy, and Jeannie... Eyes blurry with tears, he has to stop. I'm sorry, officer. I, I just... He dries his eyes. Thank you. Thank you for this little memorabilia. It means... It really means the world to me. That was nice, the lieutenant smiles. A small thing for us, but invaluable to him. He probably didn't even know Renee had the photo. I offer my sincere condolences. This seems like a fucked up thing to say. <laughs> I offer my sincere condolences. Yes, the lieutenant nods. We're both very sorry for your loss. It is what it is, part of life, really. He mumbles, only half listening to you. But to know someone for 79 years, then one day they're just gone. I just don't know anymore about anything, really. He slowly shakes his head, then remembers your presence. But you, you must need something. Um, honestly, at this point, not really. No, just, um, you know, take it easy, man. Well, I suppose maybe we ought to, uh, ought to call in to the, to the station. We might learn some things that I'd rather not learn. Hold on, we'll come back. We have to come past here to, to go back to the fishing village anyway. Racist Lorian Man's gone. You know what? As long as we're running past freight, we can uh, turn in the couple of bottles that we picked up as well. I think it's only like 60 cents worth of stuff. But we may as well. Wait a minute. I'm having a thought. The yellow roses in the window. Those aren't the flowers that were left for Kasia. Fla class. Yeah, I know what her name is. It was, in fact, 60 cents. I'm a damn hero. Of, of remembering small numbers. Small, um, inconsequential numbers. about the questions again? Because I don't really know anything. Okay. I believe you. Thought you might have something to say about, you know, the huge thing that went down. Probably people are talking about it. I have to imagine. Seven people died. A cop was shot in the street. Automatic weapons fire. Well, I guess that wasn't an automatic rifle. It was more of a shotgun. But, you know, stuff. Stuff occurred. We should probably have a chat with, uh, with a manana here. But let me first see exactly how far in we can get. Okay, that's kind of what I figured. If they're going to block us off anywhere, it's going to be right here. Measure head's gone. Alright, man, tell me what's going on. The boyadero stares at you with respect, then gestures toward the trickles of blood adorning your clothes. Danger comes with the boyadero lifestyle, right? He shrugs. Uh, there are types of danger. The one I'm usually concerned with is lung cancer or getting mauled by wildlife, not bullets. It calls back to an older era where this was commonplace, though. You have a true boyadero heart. Right, so uh, where is everyone? Hiden, gather themselves. Harbor's in full lockdown, friend. No getting in or out, for the time being. And you can't help me get inside? No, man, not today. Today is war. He says it matter-of-factly, like it's no big deal. So what's going to happen next? Time will tell, he shrugs. I'll tell Everard you drop by. I'm sure he'll be glad. Well, what will you be doing? I'll be okay here doing lookout. He surveys the red flags draped from the harbor gates. Quite the sight, aren't they? Getting to like that red, I am. And don't worry about me. I live to alleviate the worries of our brothers. 
See if any other insane killers turn up. Then I'll run. And live. Well, try not to get shot, eh? I'm sure I'll be luckier than you, friend. His grin is as wide as a desert. Alright, we don't need to talk to him about a mug collection. I think we're sort of on our uh, on our victory lap here, in the sense that probably a lot of what used to be open to us is now completed. And Tommy's still hanging out. Hold on, let's, um... We didn't actually talk to the other truck driver about the pail. I'd like to see if she's still over here. She is not. Yeah, okay. I got a little confused as to where she was. This is where she was, but she is definitely gone. Let's see what Tommy has to say. My man, you're alive. Almost, kind of, sort of alive. Uh, I'm alive and limping. Man, what a day. I missed out on most of the action, but I heard it was quite the encounter. He nods thoughtfully. Had a strong sense of finality to it. Well, that it certainly did. So, what's next? You guys heading back to Jamrock now? Talk is, local union muscle were behind it all. I'd reckon the case is closed. Even if it kind of turned into a shit show. Uh, you know, I'm still looking around. Loose threads to tie up. Good luck with that, my man. Ain't easy being you, but hey... Still breathing, right? Yeah, it hurts, but I'm still doing it. Alright, let's go make a call. Uh, it probably does not make any... Uh, it will not make a difference to tell them we've been attacked. We know Kim talked to the station already. Uh, hey... Did you find out more about the owner of the armored boots? This At this point, it's more about my curiosity than anything else. Yeah, it took some convincing, but I got the mercenary's name and a few biographical details. You ready? L the lieutenant leads in to listen, notebook in hand. <laughs> the world will end soon. It's not really an answer to her question. I'm going to say shoot. That suit of armor was issued to an Orange citizen named Ellis Cortner. That's Ellis Cortner, she spells it. Exact date of birth unknown, he was signed into the Lelystad County Neonatal Care Unit on the 28th of February, 09. Neonatal Care. He was found as a newborn in a leaf compactor near an abandoned farm. Uh, he spent four months in the neonatal unit, survived, apparently, and was assigned to a foster family at two. This is what the ICP knows about him. He was raised by foster parents, entered the Eisbrand Military Academy in Vridfort at 17, then served in the Orange's uh, forces until he was honorably discharged in 41, just a year before the Seminese conflict. Then the armor followed him to Seminine, or at least I assume it did. And that's it. There are no records of his employment in Krenel, or any of its other incarnations, or even of him entering Revishal. Any information on his foster parents? None, officer. Sorry. I mean, that name is certainly conspicuous. So all we have to connect him to, uh, to Krennel is his armor. Even that is a small miracle. These organizations usually double-check their inventory. He leans closer and shouts, Thank you, Alice. Great work. No problem, Lieutenant. She sounds pleased. I bet she has a crush on him. I kind of have a crush on him. So wait, he was found in a leaf compactor? It's a garden tool used to press leaves into these cubes. It's a detail the hospital had. The only detail in these files. So I thought it would be good for you to know. It is! Thank you, Alice! Well, we have his name and service record now. Okay, that was worth a bunch of XP. A name. This is very good. Ellis Cortiner, he says to himself. This means something to him, to know that name. Like naming a case. It's important. I'm glad the inquiry, inquiry was helpful to your investigation, officer. You have any other questions? Yeah, I gotta talk to my station again. I'm not happy about it. 10-4, come in, officer. Over. Uh, Jules, I've heard that some people think of me as a la puta madre's peon. Do you think I'm corrupted? 10-4, sir. There's a pause, as he seems to mull it over behind his enormous radio microphone. Well, there's been some talk, sir. 
Uh, does it mean... What does it mean? Some talk. What does it even mean that there's been some talk? Do they think I'm corrupt or not? I only meant that there's been some talk in the station, that's all. But there's always some talk in the station. And you know how the officers in Jamrock are. But then again, some of us truly are on the take. Which is unfortunate. Over. Oh, by the way, <laughs> happy to report I found my badge. Uh, 10-4, sir. Glad to hear that. I'll write that down, that there's no need to issue you a, issue a new one to you then. Over. Okay, well, we got some XP, I guess. So now all that's left to do is head to the fishing village, I think. It's been a weird game, man. It's been a big weird game. Sewer grate. A gateway to the river of filth. Oh, God. Take a couple of points in uh, in Inland Empire, and all of a sudden you're Rorschach. You know, I'll say this for him: that man had an uh, an active imagination. So, oh, this is blue again. Can I loot more stuff out of it, maybe? Oh, you know what? I forgot to do this when I replayed the um when I replayed the day after failing the save. Okay, well, I don't know if we need those sunglasses, but. We have them. So we're looking for a thing on the beach. We're also looking to borrow uh, that boat. I'm just going to run along the beach while holding tab here. Alright, we're definitely going to go and talk to you in just a moment. We should talk to the washerwoman. We should let her know we're okay. Our tenant, the policeman. I hope the waves don't keep you up at night. What can I help you with? Hey, I got shot. I, even I can see that. I told you not to bring your trouble with you, policeman. We've got troubles of our own here. Though I suppose you took the worst of it. Turns out you were your own ill omen. The woman chuckles to herself. Uh, yeah, I guess you were right. The men with guns were coming for me after all. She nods. I'm not sure those were the last of the men with guns, either. There are always more coming for your kind, officer. Well, then we'll be ready for them. Maybe. Kinda. Sorta. Anyway, I'm off. Alright, let's, um... I want to run down along the beach. Because, for real, I want to see if we have somehow revealed something with our weird... Our weird thought here. Also, I'm kind of curious if um, if anything has happened to the door of that big bunker-looking structure. Because it's still possible that we could get in there. I sure would like to see what is in there. Maybe, maybe this refers to a different beach? Maybe the thought we had refers to a different beach? I guess this isn't even really the beach, right? This is the ice. Hold on, we'll uh, we'll run up by the radio tower. It's entirely possible that I am just tilting at nothing here. Also, trying to stealthily check my phone <laughs> without disrupting the recording. Listen, I got an actual phone call. When does that happen? Who uses the phone as a phone anymore? It's ridiculous. That's some disco shit. Okay, interfacing check has not changed even a tiny little bit. What would the last ball even mean? Yeah, I gotta think, this has gotta be a thing related to a place that we've not yet been. Right, there is yet beach. I'm gonna check the trap. Why not? Let's have a look. Nothing else to do. They're all just lying around gathering dust and rainwater. And we've been told there's nothing else to do with the traps. Like, all of the traps. So game developers desperately trying to save me some time. Because I'm not saying I definitely would have run around and checked them all. But I would have thought about checking them all. What if we discovered the Phasmid? 
Why, we'd be so rich and famous we could leave this detective nonsense behind entirely, I think. Maybe. Possibly. Okay, hurry over here, Raphael. Wait a moment, hold on. Relax, it's not yours. You didn't crash every motor carriage in Revachal. Uh, hopefully. It's important to stop and recognize those thoughts. That's a whole experience point. And that's another one of those things where you can just never have enough. Alright, hello. I would like to commandeer your boat, please. I guess if you say please, it's not really commandeering. You're limping. Why are you limping? You look terrible. Uh, some people hurt me. Is this from the shooting in town? We heard gunshots. Not that we don't hear gunshots all the time, but they were closer than usual. There was an exchange of fire on a Rue de saint guilaine It's nothing to be worried about, madame. Uh, you should see the other guys. They're all dead. So you're a killer. That's good, I guess. I guess. Better than being dead. Uh... <laughs> most cops are killers is... <laughs> probably true. It seems to be true in this world, at least, but... Maybe not a super helpful thing to say. Uh, I was a killer long before this happened, which is also true. I'm not a killer, I'm a cop. It's a lie. I am a killer and a cop. Or I could just be masculine at her, like, really hard in a really gross way. Let's, I was a killer long before this happened. I, I've always taken you for one. That's for sure. Not a lot of RCM men who aren't killers. See, she knows. She gets it. Of course. Can I help you with something? Uh... We need to get to that island. That won't be a problem. It's wind still, and the tar just dried. She points to her skiff next to the jetty. We got two days of relative sunshine ahead. Okay, uh, what's on that island? Nothing, just ruins. Used to be some kind of fortification there before the war, for the communards. An anti-aircraft gun, I think. Bombed to bits in the landing. I haven't been there myself. Always steered clear of it. Hasn't been there herself? Who has, then? If not you. Well, my husband used to drink there. Him and his drinking buddies. Always seemed like a bad place to drink to me. People died there during the landing, you know, my mother told me. She looks around. The kids sometimes go there, too. I know they do, on rafts. I tell them not to, but they bring back old bullet casings and such. Oh yeah? Which kids? The twins. She points to the two kids playing on the concrete yard. God forbid they bring the girl along on some rickety barge. Can we maybe ask your twins about that place before we go? Would that would that be alright? Be my guest, she looks at the boys. They have a strange way of talking. Yeah, I had picked that up. See if you can get anything useful out of them. I seldom do. Uh, is there anything I should know about getting there? Well, most of it's sunken, underwater. That means concrete underwater. Cut your boat if you're not careful. Be sure to enter from the south side. Water's deep there. Aye, aye, Captain. Uh, can we borrow your boat, please? If you promise to bring it back, and no scraping the hull, I just got it nice and yellow. And no drinking on the boat, her eyes narrow. And no joyriding, either. Well, of course, ma'am. It's only for a day or two. Official police business. Uh, what if I want to rock? No, 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 no. We're going to nod along attentively. I'm going to appear to not be a person who is going to destroy her boat. The crow's feet disappear from the corners of her eyes as she smiles at you. All right, thank you. We'll use your skiff to get there, then. Please be conservative with the fuel, will you? I just filled her up, but it's a small tank. Okay, easy enough. Let's go have a chat with the twins. Real curious about old bullet casings. Scruffy-haired little boy kicks a stone while the other watches him do it. Okay, kids, you've uh, you've been to that island, right? On that island, the one who's busy kicking a stone points to the bay. Yeah, that one. I need to know what's there. That's, um, nothing? The boy pauses to think with his finger in his mouth. It's just a sea fort and some plants. You can take a raft there. It's great. And, and, the other one butts in, we make a fire. We, we make a... we make a fire. Mm-hmm, his brother nods. Gather the sticks for the fire, and bullets. Or, or not real bullets, empty bullets. Bullet shells. 
There are a lot of them left over from the war, but this could be important. Wait, you mean shells? I don't know what those are. Okay, and what then? There are lights. The fire guy comes and asks us to put the fire out. Your nerve endings sting from the mention of a guy, as they often do. They must mean a human being. <laughs> yeah, that was my assumption as well. On that island, but it's cut off. Wait, someone lives on the island? No, the boy answers, shaking his head vehemently. His brother looks at, you, looks at him, then looks at you. Yes, he says. The lieutenant raises his eyebrows and whips out his notebook. Let's go with yes. And why is he the fire guy? Because, because, the boy pauses to think. Because he asked to put the fire out, the other explains. And why does he ask you to put the fire out? Um, I, I don't know. He doesn't like it. He doesn't like people to be there. He shouldn't go. Yeah, the, the other one adds laconically, standing with his hands glued to his sides like a little tin soldier. Because he doesn't want to be found. Smoke traces. You mentioned something about lights. I... one of them. It's hard to tell which one now starts. I don't know. Did you mean there are electrical lights? He points to a street light. Um, yeah. The boy looks at his toes. Is there anything else you can tell me about this guy? Age? Like, does he live there? No, he doesn't live there, I don't think. No, he lives there, the other nods. He's been there twice, not two times. Huh. The first one pauses to think, then comes to some kind of conclusion. He doesn't live there. He isn't there sometimes. Anything else? What does this guy look like? I don't know, they say almost in unison. What? How come? We... we ran. He just yelled we shouldn't be there. Your father used to go to that island too, didn't he? Our father killed himself. Don't say that. He didn't. His brother punches him. The boy's eyes well up like he's about to start crying. I... oh boy, I don't feel like I'm... Did he kill himself? I don't remember if we even know this. I'm maybe gonna just keep my mouth shut for a moment here. Let's try not to make things worse. I'm sorry, the one says to the other, rubbing his brother's shoulder affectionately. So is that all you know? Is there anything more you can tell me about the island? There's a... the boy says, rubbing his eyes. It's clear that he has no intention of finishing the sentence. Lights? Fire guy? The lieutenant looks at you. We should check up on that island. Yeah, I think we probably should. That said, and I am sorry to do this, uh, I mean, if you look at the video timer, I think probably this is the place where we ought to stop for today. I did not intend to spend the whole, uh, the whole hour just dicking around in town, but I guess we had a lot of dicking to do. And hey, ain't that the truth. So... That's going to be it for us for today. My bad. <laughs> Thank you all so much for sticking with it, though. Come back next time for maybe the last new place we'll ever see. And we'll see you then.